You want to find gold? I'm going to show you how to use geology to find it. You see all these mountains behind me all the way down? That's all Aztec sandstone from the Jurassic and Triassic period. Now all that sandstone you see up there is about 150 to 165 million years old. You will find dinosaur footprints in it and we found fossils of fish up in there as well. As a geologist, I can tell you right now, there's not one speck of gold in those mountains or in the dolomite that's on the back of those mountains. Now all that Aztec sandstone used to be a huge sand dune that went all the way up into Utah. And then through a process called lithification, it became rock. And of course you have the keystone thrust here, which has pushed everything up. Now you've got iron oxide and you've got hematite mixed in all this sandstone. And that's why you got these red colors as it oxidizes out. Now this is all part of a mountain chain called the Spring Mountains. Now, just bear with me. There's a reason why I'm telling you all this, okay? So just keep them pants on. This particular mountain chain, which goes all the way down the state line, like I said, is mostly dolomite from the Paleozoic period, and it has hardly any gold in it. Now, knowing the geology is going to save you so much time because you can literally look at an entire mountain range and say, I'm 99% sure there's no gold in there. Yes, sandstone can have gold in it, but not this sandstone, and especially not the dolomite that's behind it. Now, the dolomite does host a lot of other minerals through replacement deposits such as galena which is where you get your lead and silver from and sphalerite which is a zinc sulfide the mountains are full of that but not a lot of gold very small amounts only a few locations do these mountains actually give up gold and there's a reason for that and i'm going to teach you the geology of that and i'm even going to tell you where these locations are at here's that limestone i was telling you about this is actually on the sea floor at one time when Nevada had an inland sea. And of course, through lithification, it has turned into a rock. Fossils. Right there where my thumb is. Not bad, huh? Now, as you become more of an expert in this field of geology, you're gonna start using different tools to help you localize certain areas that have gold or possibilities of gold. And that would be a geological map. This is one of many different types of geological maps that you're probably going to see when you're researching mines. Geological maps are great if you know how to read them and interpret them. There's a lot of information in there that will correspond with your USGS reports. And you can start localizing areas that might have potential gold deposits. And when I say gold deposits, I'm talking load gold. Now what you can do is overlay templates of known gold mines, abandoned gold mines, over the top of these geological maps, and you'll start to see patterns forming. And the pattern is gonna be where you start having all these thrust faults and contact zones, you're gonna see a lot of these gold mines are sitting right on it or right near it. This is a great example of a geological map that has a template of existing mines laid over the top of it. This is drawn up by a mining company that's been sampling good springs for the last couple of years. Here you can see all the different rock structures and the fault zones that are incorporated in it, making it very easy to find potential load deposits. And you're also going to start seeing patterns of specific types of rock types that have mineralization in them. So a good example like I was telling you earlier, is down here in the Spring Mountain Range, you have a lot of dolomite. It's limestone. But in one specific area, you have a granitic intrusion. And if you remember, I told you one of the basic gold models is intrusion-related deposits. And that's what you have there. And that's what we did. We found it on a USGS map, then we localized it using a geological map and of course an overlay of the surrounding mines. And lo and behold, we found one of the richest areas in the Spring Mountain Range. Now, if you haven't seen that video I made on the 10 gold deposition models, basic models, I'm gonna leave a link right here. Go ahead and click on it. It'll explain those 10 models. And keep in mind, those are basic models, and off of those models come subcategories as well. So, I know you're asking, Jeff, we want to know exactly where all this gold is, the super gene gold that you're talking about. Well, before I get too far along, for those of you out there that don't know what super gene is, it's just basically secondary enrichment. 
And some of your richest deposits have come from that. And you're gonna see that as part of this deposition model too. You have porphyry granite, which is intruded on the limestone. And what has happened is, is at those contact zones, you have a process called metasomatism taking place. And a lot of the gold was originally in the porphyry granite and it migrated over to the contact zones. And at those contact zones, you have incredibly rich secondary enrichment zones of crystalline gold. And here you can see limestone and then down here you can see the decomposing granite right here. See how soft that is? Well, right here, this is what the old timers were looking for. This, we tested has gold in it. This is what they were chasing. Now when we looked it up on the USGS report, we found out that this mine on the other side of this hill produced somewhere in the average range of two ounces per ton. But as you can see, the vein travels at a 45 degree angle. And then if you look up towards the contact zones here, right here, that's nothing but solid iron in there. And you can see the pieces of solid iron that we chipped out of here last week. Because we're gonna take a rock drill and we're gonna drill into this, this uh, vein right here and we're gonna sample in further because the gold we got was fine with some small little flakes in it. And I'm hoping the deeper we go, uh, the bigger the pieces of gold will get, so. You want gold? You gotta earn it. I already see pieces of gold right there. Let's see if I can shake it down for you. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? See if I can get some of that black sand off of there. Look at that. Oh now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that but all the gold is in these little pockets like this in this and there's lots and lots of it. Now a lot of the gold that's found in that area is not associated with quartz. It's associated with this material right here, which is limonite. Limonite is just a journal term. Don't get caught up on it. It's usually red, has a lot of iron oxides in it. You also have two other minerals called jerosite and plumble jerosite, and those deposits are extremely rich too. They're usually found with a copper halo around the lens. Here's video that we shot many years ago of the mine that we're talking about. It's up on the hill overlooking Sandy Valley. Of course, a lot of the areas that have gold have these markings around them. And a lot of the halos that I described earlier of copper carbonates are around the jerosite and plumbable jerosite. Here's a good example right here where this pocket is very rich. You can find these all throughout the mine inside this one particular level. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite, and you can see jerosite and plumble jerosite in there as well. And then, of course, you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. And a lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them, and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. Also, when you do find a large pocket, you'll see gold like this, which is crystalline gold in nature. Very rich. The gold there is crystalline in nature. And I even made a video about it called Rich Gold and Red Dirt. It's extremely rich, but the problem is it's in pockets. Not all the limonite has gold in it. We found that the richest sections of these veins is where they level out to about 30 to 45 degrees. And especially if you see a halo of green talc on the outside of them. Tremendous amount of gold, just masses of it. Wire gold, dendritic gold, it's all forming in there. And you usually see huge concentrations of bog iron in there as well. Now where you have replacement deposits in some of these areas, you're gonna see, like I said, a halo of copper on the outside. The very center is very rich. It's like a pocket of gold. Now I'm gonna tell you the name of the mines but that doesn't mean I'm telling you to go run out there and dig up the people's property because these mines are on patent claims. And the owner does not like a lot of people out there on his mines. But the name of the mine is called the Keystone Mine. You have the Keystone, you have the Chiquita, and you have the Oro Amigo. And not far from there 
is a fault system that created the boss mine. That's the one that has jarosite and plumbo jarosite. And some of the areas where they found gold inside of those lenses assayed out at 117 ounces per ton. Try to get your mind around that. Try to keep in mind that this is for this particular district. Every district is gonna have a different set of circumstances and a different type of deposition model. So it's not a, a one thing fits all. That's where you have to do your research and you have to understand your geology. And we're gonna continue to make more videos to teach you geology. But I think it's important we only teach you a little bit at a time because it's easier to understand and digest. And that way you're not overwhelmed so much. So right now, what you need to remember is fault zones, contact zones, and when you have intrusion related deposits, look for limonite. You can't miss it, it's red, it's deep red, and it'll definitely stain your clothes if you get it on there. And it can have extremely rich values of gold. And this is gold that is precipitating and crystallizing inside the limonite. It's a beautiful thing to see and I'll try to put up snapshots of it so you can see what it looks like. Now, if this video has enriched your life in any way, I want you to go ahead and smash that like button. And in the future, we're gonna make more geology videos because I think it's important that you understand this. So when you get out in the field, after you've done your research, you know exactly what to localize and what to look for. And then you can go out, either find deposits that have been overlooked or find older deposits that can be reworked again because it's profitable with gold prices where they're at today. So, all right, well, I'm going to get on out of here because I still got a long ways to walk. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and who, you better know who, son, saying you want to learn geology because it'll lead you to that AU. Well, you just keep on a watching, sonny Jim, and we'll have you getting fistfuls of AU. Take care, everybody.